tonight on Evening Magazine. I'm Jim Dever here to tell you about how country music superstars are banding together to fight hunger. I'm St. Brian with the story of Seattle's most eccentric designer, the always colorful, sometimes shocking, Jamie Von Stratton. We're making Little Molly's in tonight's Seattle Top Chef's Kids Menu. Meet the artist behind the strangest family in the state and slimming down with divine intervention. And I'm Michael in Tulip Town, USA. We'll meet the first family of tulips in a hop, skip, and a jump. But first, it could be your neighbor, could be your friend, could be you. Hunger is reality for nearly 50 million Americans. Jim Devers here to help us all learn how we can lend a helping hand. Hi, Jim. That's right, Michael, and it can start with something as simple as watching a great concert on TV. Here in the land of plenty, one in six Americans still struggles with hunger. That's why country music superstars are banding together in a televised concert. We're pumped. To help stamp out hunger. You know, we're definitely happy to be a part of this. This Friday, the CMA award-winning duo Florida Georgia Line can be seen on stage from Vegas, along with other top acts, including Rascal Flatts, and Danielle Bradbury from The Voice. I mean, we're all in this together, so it's, it's really awesome. The musicians are joining in harmony to get out the word about Outnumber Hunger, a campaign to help feed the 13 million American families in need. Encouraging people to have a good time for a good cause. You know, I think it's part of our job and part of our duty, not only as artists, but as, as human beings to, to try to help other people who need it. We've always you know, said from day one we want to be bigger than the music and uh, for some reason we've been given a bigger voice the past couple years and uh, we want to use that in, for good obviously and uh, give back and there's a huge, huge issue of hunger in America, more than we even knew about. Every Gannett TV station in the country, including King 5, will air this celebration for a cause and let you know how you can help outnumber hunger. The person next door to you could be going hungry and you could be the one to change their lives. So tune in, it's gonna be a great time too, so you get two in one. Remember, that's the Outnumber Hunger concert right here on King 5 Friday night at eight. Michael? Thanks, Jim. You can also help out by going to the Outnumber Hunger website and entering codes that are printed on certain General Mills food products. Each time you do that, they will make a donation. Well, each time you come to the Skagit Valley Tulip Festival, first stop for many is here at Rusengarda. Here's why. When Mother Nature says it's time, the Skagit Valley explodes with color. She can't be rushed, forced, or fooled unless you have the magic touch of the Rusen family. They are the titans of tulips. We're growing till 365 days a year. The Rusin's flower business is the largest in the world. And in Mount Vernon, they grow 95% of the fields that bloom every spring. Out here, weather dictates when the tulips show up. But take it inside, and the Rusin's rule. Housed inside high-tech greenhouses are trays and trays of tulips that grow in every color for every occasion. Christmas time we'll do more red and whites, Valentine's Day we'll do red and whites. Um, so it's basically just a seasonal color thing. Third generation grower Brent Rusin gives us a rare look at how this huge family business operates. By moving a tray in different quadrants within the greenhouse, we can move it somewhere where it's about three or four degrees warmer. And that way, they can get the tulips to bloom on cue. When you have a special holiday coming up, you know, and you need your tulips to be showing color by a certain day, we can make that happen here in the greenhouses. The inside tulips will be shipped across the country as fresh cut flowers year round. The outside flowers will come and go, which explains why crowds from all over visit the Rusin's display garden every spring when Mother Nature says it's time. Being around tulips for my entire life, you kind of take it for granted during the spring bloom, but then when you see visitors come up and the expression on their face and their whole reaction to the situation, I think it, you kind of realize what a special place this is. You can take great pictures here at Rusengarda, like these ladies are obviously capturing, or you can get a beautiful photo like this one. Thanks, Rob. This place, by the way, is open 362 days a year, so come on out and enjoy. Well, art, like beauty, is in the eye of the beholder. St. Brian went all the way across the state to test that theory out. Hi, St. Well, we're in Walla Walla, and a lot of people are asking us, have you met the muffler man? 
Well, now we can say we have. We stay pretty busy with uh, cars doing, uh, you know, our exhaust work and our hitches. But at Melody Muffler, when the bays empty out, the sparks really start to fly. It's gonna be a little puppy dog. For more than 30 years, Mike Hammond has been turning scrap metal into traffic stopping art. First guy was just the muffler man, the guy standing out on the corner. This is Muffy, she's married to the muffler man over here. This is old chain off of uh, a farm implement machine. Uh, some spoons for her earrings. Um, we have horseshoes for fingers and then uh, made the little muffler boy to kind of create the family and a little dog. Before long, his front lot was full of creatures, some cartoonish, some alien, and one that looks an awful lot like hometown legend Drew Bledsoe. Drew's just kind of uh, somebody we look up to here. And that is how a muffler shop became one of Walla Walla's tourist attractions. I couldn't buy advertising like what I get that sets out on the sides of the streets out there. Art that attracts more than just people with car trouble. Next thing I know, people were coming in and uh, wanting to do specific uh, items for them. So you'll often find Mike in the back shed <whistles> looking for stuff. Right now I'm looking for a tail for that dog. What could that be? To me, that looks like uh, a giraffe's head. While some pieces are allowed to rust in the open air, Mike's got sculptures priced as high as $3,000, living in studios and showrooms. Even Jay Leno owns a Hammond. They're always good, but sometimes better than others, and, and it's, uh, it's a fulfillment. Good, how you doing? Good, man. You've been the inspiration for a lot of my sales. And today yeah, is yeah, more like fulfilling than most. Like we asked Drew Bledsoe to stop by and give a critique of Mike's number 11. Well, I mean, I think I've got bigger muscles, you know, than this guy, or at least I did back when I was playing. But, uh, you know, he is a pretty handsome guy. <laughs> Big feet. Tall and lean. Tall and lean. That's me. How do we look? Good? This is going to be a very unique pet. He will be a watchdog. You point him at what you want him to watch, and he'll watch it until you point him somewhere else. Retirement? That is for somebody else. Mike plans to keep the sparks flying for as long as he can. I don't think I'm gonna go anywhere. I'm gonna just stay right here. I'm having fun. I'll just keep doing this until I can't do it anymore. Amazing stuff. Check out some of Bob's other creations like SpongeBob muffler pants, the very sultry wine lady. Who knew a muffler could look so glamorous? I kind of like the Rattler made out of scrap iron and a clock made of springs. This is interesting. Mike says he had to take it down because he always thought it was nine o'clock. We're back in a flash. Lose weight the heavenly way later. And we're making little mollies in tonight's Seattle Top Chef kids menu. Today I'm going to propose to my girlfriend of about 12 years. Hey guys, Kim here with a wedding proposal that can only be described as epic. So Lil Jane wanted to make his proposal to Jennifer Kim something special. So he teamed up with the guys at Seattle production company Super Frog Saves Tokyo, tricked Jennifer into coming to this soundstage, and blew the roof off traditional one knee approaches. In one take, Salil acted out his love for her by riding in on a white horse, expertly double dutching, standing his ground against a knife thrower, arm wrestling her mom, and finally, as their family and friends filled the room, Salil lifted his arm to receive a hawk who delivered the all-important ring. Then he promised to never stop surprising her if she'd become his wife. Jennifer said yes. She didn't know. Can't wait to see what they have planned for their wedding. Surrounded by all these tulips got me to wondering, why are tulips called tulips? Is it because they kind of look like two lips when you turn them sideways? Actually, no. It comes from an ancient Persian word for turban because they kind of resemble a turban. So now you know. But we don't know what to do with the leftover meat in our fridge, do we? Well, the head chef at the Hunt Club at the Sereno Hotel has an idea that your kids might like. It's tonight's Seattle Top Chef's Kids Menu. For Dan Gilmore, executive chef at the Sorrento Hotel, taking on the challenge of presenting new dishes at such a classic Seattle spot is one he's not afraid to take on. 
being a 105 year old hotel, it's uh, got a lot of memories for a lot of people and so you're trying to appeal to a, a, a broad spectrum. Everybody has a memory of the Sorrento Hotel. You need help? When he's not cooking at work, you can find him at home with his wife and two young kids. Well, Leo is three and he is vibrant and vivacious and Lucy is, is just turned one, a little bit more shy. Like a lot of new parents, they found out kids can be kind of picky when it comes to food. Leo is, I think, your, your typical three-year-old. I mean, one day he loves something and he'll only eat that and you think you're onto something and uh, the next day you offer it to him and he won't touch it. But there's one dish that's always a hit. What are we going to make, Leo? Molly. Molly's? Yeah. What kind of Molly's? Yummy Molly's. Molly's are actually tamales in Leo talk. Uh, we're going to make pork tamales with blistered tomato sauce. The nice thing about this dish is that it uses up, if you've made a pork roast or braised pork or anything like that, you just use the meat from that. The tamales are traditionally wrapped in, in corn husks, just dried corn husks, and then just in warm water, and they'll soften up. For the sauce, Dan starts by roughly chopping four Roma tomatoes. Well, we're actually gonna cook them at a high enough heat that the skins will start to uh, char a little bit. Once that cooks a bit, he adds garlic, salt, and cilantro before hitting it with a handheld blender. Or you could just cook this down and it will sort of, you can hit it with a fork and mash it up. So while the sauce is cooking, the filling is cooking, we're just gonna make the masa over here. Masa is just a uh, lime treated corn flour. Basically, you're looking for a paste more than a dough. Now we're going to fill the tamale. And the thing with masa, if, if your fingers are a little bit wet, it's actually, it won't stick to you. After spreading out the masa and putting in the filling, Dan folds the tamales up before putting them in a homemade steamer made of a pot and a colander. And you just want to set them in there so the open side is up. After 30 to 40 minutes, the tamales are cooked through. He serves it with a side of black beans and fresh corn. You're eating vegetables. So whether you call them mollies or tamales, leftovers can become a wonderful thing. Yummy mollies. If you'd like Dan's tamale recipe, we have it posted there on our Facebook page. Praying the pounds away after this. Welcome back to Evening Magazine and to Ruz and Garda. And imagine living on the Pacific Ocean in picturesque Seabrook. That sound like a dream? Well, that could become reality. Seabrook and Grays Harbor Tourism present their Win a Beach House for a Year sweepstakes. Win a Seabrook Beach House for an entire year or $10,000. Visit their website, seabrookwa.com slash win and sign up to be entered. Increase your chances by completing challenges and earning points. There are other great prizes like weekend ocean getaways. Enter before the May 4th deadline, then be there when Evening Magazine reveals the big winner. We want to give you and your family the key to your very own Seabrook Beach House. Enter at seabrookwa.com slash win. Well, no doubt about it, losing weight is not easy. In fact, a recent guest on The Oprah Show said if we could do it by ourselves, we would have all done it by now. Those wise words came from renowned spiritual teacher Marianne Williamson, who says to lose weight, we all just need some help from above. Here's Kim. Step left, right. In our pursuit for the perfect body, nice. we're bombarded with advice from exercise enthusiasts, yeah! dietitians, and celebrities. I know it hurts, but I am saving your life right now. All powerful experts, but none as high and mighty as God. From the heavens above comes a movement to pray away the pounds. Books like Born Again Bodies, Pray Fit, and The Lord's Table show followers the benefits of thinliness through godliness. Which is where the real church, the real synagogue, the real mosque, it's all in here. At the forefront of this spiritual approach to weight loss so is Marianne Williamson. What has happened in our society? Well-known lecturer, spiritual teacher, and best-selling author of A Course in Weight Loss, 21 Spiritual Lessons for Surrendering Your Weight Forever. So the forever part has to do with finding a new way to live. It's much bigger than just losing some weight. It's living in a different way inside yourself. Marianne writes the only way to stop yo-yo dieting and compulsive eating is to take a journey of enlightenment deep within one's soul. And when you thus dwell more lightly within 
yourself and your spirit, psychologically and emotionally, you then subconsciously create a lighter container. So it's really about lightening up. If only it was as easy as going to church every Sunday. It's not. Like overcoming an addiction to alcohol, it's a step-by-step -step process, including Marianne's lesson number five, start a love affair with food. A lot of times people think, well, if I have an overeating issue, my issue is I love food too much. Mm -mm. The overeater's relationship to food is not one of love, it's one of obsession. Successfully change the mind-body connection and you can ditch dieting, think right, and you'll eat right. Your body wants to eat healthy food. You'll no longer crave decadent desserts like chocolate cake. So I think ultimately the goal is to eat what you want and it will be probably less of the chocolate cake than you think. You won't hear Marianne preach about exercise either. By lesson number 18, honor the process, this too shall come naturally. Weight that is inappropriate or excessive literally falls by the wayside. Staying slim has never been easy, but with some divine intervention from the powers that be, you may see weight loss in a whole new light. It's a relearning in, in how to relate to food, how to relate to your body, and most importantly, how to relate to the love in your heart. Marianne's book is available online and at, uh, let's see, where else is it available? Uh, major bookstores. Oh, major bookstores. Stick around. You're not dressed until you've worn a Bond strap. after this. Welcome back to Mount Vernon, and a Seattle fashion designer is dazzling audiences with her incredible costumes. She is a dazzler, but as St. Brian finds out, her personality is as entertaining as her clothes. Forget what the weather is doing in Seattle. In costume designer Jamie Von Stratton's world, it's always sunny, colorful, and in the 60s. I think I kind of float in the... 60s mod sci-fi realm but then it bounces sometimes into this like cupcake dress betsy johnson land like i'm kind of right in the middle of both it's a little, a little now more than ever jamie's designs are in demand especially among seattle performers like burlesque dancer iva handful here wearing a sequined black and white von Stratton. It's not just a costume, it fits my personality and it fits everything that I am as a performer and as a person. Jamie doesn't just make costumes, she wears them. That's her in the lobster outfit, Jamie as a pirate, as Snow White, and on stage, often as a member of the burlesque troupe, The Atomic Bombshells. And I just was like, this will be fun. And then, you know, <laughs> it just started getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then I realized there was this whole universe of, you know, burlesque that would just allow me a lot of opportunities. When we first met Jamie. I've choreographed this whole bit where I do, like, hat stuff, you know. She was designing both her dance steps and her feathery costume for a new burlesque performance. I really wish it could be the size of like a car. In the past, she has danced for laughs, but this time will be different. I'm gonna do this like really beautiful dance with just lots and lots and lots of feathers. Weeks later, it's opening night of the Moisture Fest, Seattle's annual celebration of the zany. Jamie's feathery outfit is ready. So this is how the onesie turned out. You did and take a lot of feathers out. I did, yeah, because it looked like I looked like a big hairy ape, which is not cute. This is very cute. And there she is, floating on stage, wearing 200 ostrich feathers and too many rhinestones to count. A really weird way after a decade, it's like a a coming of age piece of like, hey, guess what? I finally have a glamour act, everybody. Of course, we can't show you how it all ends, but she did hold the audience spellbound. Yeah, no, it went well. Everything went well. The band played great, so. Jamie Von Stratton doing more than her part to make Seattle a more colorful place to live. I really like it because you can take whatever's in your head and make it a reality. You're making people's dreams come true.
I think Jamie might like the latest from the King 5 home team collection. If you would like your very own Von Stratton, she can make one for you. Kind of cool. Well, thanks for spending part of your Tuesday evening with us here at the 2014 Skagit Valley Tulip Festival. Up next, right here on King 5, it's an all-new The Voice. In fact, tonight, it's the playoffs. Enjoy. <laughs>